well-decorated player, of course, playing that comfy Sableye powered Lost Box deck, that single prize deck that we've seen throughout the weekend, repping Lost Origin. Yes, absolutely. This deck really is <laughs> totally based around cards from the new set, Lost Origin. Cal, on the other hand, rocking out with the Palkia, like we mentioned, and has plenty of accomplishments to his own right. Top 16 this season already. We talked about his ninth place finish at the World Championships in 2022. A top 16 at Salt Lake City at the end of last season as well. And also a deep run at the World Championships. He got top four in 2014 as a senior. Wow, that is incredible as well. Such a decorated player on Cal's side too and has been playing throughout the last several seasons, I believe as well. Operating this origin form, Palkia V-Star, what we are all familiar with. Of course, that Intellion engine being the power of the deck, searching out cards with that Shady Dealings, essentially giving you access to anything that you want in your deck as long as it's an item card. So that is super powerful indeed. And we will see if that consistency can stay strong here with Cal in this match. These players to this point, both 13 wins apiece, looking to get one more. One win away from becoming the Peoria Regional Champion. One win wow. away from being $5,000 richer. One win away from 200 championship points. So much on the line, but these players, both stoic, both focused. They know the task at hand. They know what they need to do to accomplish. They've definitely got a game plan in their head of how they want to approach this matchup. It's going to just come down to how do those opening hands look? Can you play to your game plan the way that you drew it up? Or will there have to be some adjustments on the fly? Oh, yeah, most definitely. And it's kind of opposite strategies, I guess, in a sense, in the fact that Cal gets to search out his deck for the cards that he needs for his strategies. Right. Tord, on the other hand, kind of has to pick and choose and has less agency in that sense with these abilities off of the Comfy, that flower selecting, and of course that Colrus's experiment as well, giving you options, but you have to make some really tough decisions as well. So we are going to see a lot of those decisions made today by both players, just in a little bit of different ways. Yes, it is a, a difficult task picking off of flower selecting sometimes. These players are drawing these opening hands, though. We are so close to getting underway here in Peoria, Illinois. I'm not sure who's going first quite yet. That is also something that could definitely have an impact because if Tord is going second, he could get off an attack turn one with his Cramorant. Though Cal, I think, wants to go first anyway, regardless of the potential of that Cramorant attack because he needs to have a turn to evolve his Pokemon. He needs to yeah. get down Sobbles, get down Palkias, try to find some energy so he can evolve into his Drizziles and, of course, his powerful V-Star Pokemon. Yep, and we just got word that Tord is going first. So that will be the start of our matches. Can I just say, Chip, real quick, look at those cool hats that our judges are wearing. They're so <laughs> yes, cool. Yes, yes. I believe AJ there on the left, our head judge, he is, uh, that's rocking a hat from the uh, the 2019 World Championships, the staff hat with the Eevee wow. on it. You love to see it. Sporting it. I love it. All right. So both our players here laying out their prize cards. This is going to be super crucial for both players' decks. Let's see what are, what is in the prize prize cards and if it is that influential to these upcoming turns. Double air balloon for Tord is a little bit of a little awkward as well as a switch card, but Tord plays we've talked about before so many switching cards. I think it was like 18 yeah. switching cards. There's, a, or there's a lot of ways for him to move between these comfies. The mobility is a strong. couple of supporters at the the top of the prizes could be awkward for sure. Only having access to three Colrus makes it less likely you'll find them early and then Clara can be extremely important in the late game. Yeah, most definitely. And here we go. There is the fist bump between our players, and we are now beginning our finals match of our Masters division. And Tord, I think, is going to start this finals off about the best way there is to start off a game of the Pokemon TCG. He's got a Battle VIP pass in hand. Yeah, I'm sure both of our players want to see that Battle VIP pass in their starting hand because it is so crucial to these decks. And so I'm sure Tord is happy with that, not having to retrieve it from uh, another ability. This is pretty smart from Tord before using the VIP pass, putting a card on top of his deck that is not useful right now, Cross Switcher. It's a very good late game card. So having it clunk up his opening hand makes things a little weird, a little awkward. So he went ahead to use that Primate Wisdom ability, put it on top of the deck, and then played a search card. He's got the Fog Crystal. We know Battle VIP Pass is in the hand as well. This can fetch out the first Comfy. Battle VIP Pass can search out another Comfy and a Cramorant, potentially. 
but that cross switcher is now in the deck. It'll get shuffled in, and he'll be able to look for it later on when he wants it, but for now, it's just not a super strong card in the early turns. Yeah, just really displaying the different uh, level and skill that you could see. You know, you're not just reading the cards that you have in your hand and playing out to your cards. You're formulating your strategy and all of your outs right away by just primate wisdoming that card back into deck, as you said, Chip. So there's the fog crystal conclusion there to search out that comfy from the deck. As we said, there are more searching cards in hand. We'll see what else Tord has in store for this hand. Potential cards that can be played. Of course, Comfy now coming into the playing field here with that flower selecting ability able to be used. And that is potentially what we're going to see first even before the Battle of the AP pass, and but we shall see. Cause potentially what Tord is wanting to do here, if he does use Comfy first, is he's probably wanting to have higher chances to draw into basic Pokemon, but no. But no. <laughs> we'll decide to use the VIP pass, Yeah, get a couple basic go. Pokemon out. Basic Pokemon are out, but that Comfy is looking comfy in the uh, active position there for Tord. So searching out that mana fee, so important. Uh, for this deck, especially playing against another deck that plays that Radiant Greninja card as well. So protection against that little barrier on your bench there. And then also another Comfy coming out of the woodwork. Yeah, the Manaphy is going to be a hugely impactful card in this game. Its wave availability protects your bench, and Cal's great attacker in this matchup is that Radiant Greninja, being able to target down two Pokemon. And Cal actually does play a tech to deal with the Manaphy. He's got access to the Canceling Cologne. So a play Ooh, he could do is Cross Switcher, bring up the Manaphy, then play Canceling Cologne, and then use Radiant Greninja to target two Comfies. That's kind of the play he wants to go for at some point in this game. And that exact reason is why Tord is actually playing two copies of Manaphy. <laughs> so we'll see if Tord can find that second co copy if he knows that Cal has access to the Canceling Cologne. That's, that's definitely something I would expect to see from Tord. Yeah, most definitely. And there are ways to retrieve the Manaphy's out of the discard pile, potentially, too. Of course, we did see one of those Claras in the prize cards, but there is still one in deck playing two total for Tord. All right, so we are just seeing multiple abilities right now, a total of three cards currently in the Lost Zone for Tord. Of course, those key numbers being four, seven, and ten. Uh, 10, probably the most important for Tord's deck because it activates that Sableye yes. that is on the bench there, that Lost Mine attack that is so important to spread 12 damage counters for only one Psychic Energy around and take potentially double prize knockouts sometimes from Tord, which is huge. All right, so now we are oh. back over on Cal's side. Look at this oh, hand. Oh, wow, this is... Is that a Drapion in there and a Zigzagoon? Yeah, this oh, is no. not good from Cal. No supporter, no Sobble, no search out, no level ball, wow. quick ball, or battle VIP pass. Just a bucket. Wow, that can get some water energies. When <laughs> I think we're going to see a rule of the region here, Shelby. <laughs> yeah, I think so too, Chip. Also, like when you're playing a water deck and you have two dark Pokemon in your starting hand, yeah. it's uh, pretty ironic <laughs> there. So, capacious bucket here, searching out those two energy. Of course, taking a look at the deck. This is the first search for Cal and probably the last search, I think, depending uh, on, I didn't see any other search cards in the hand, I think, for Cal. So that is extremely rough and definitely not what you want to see as far as a start from Cal because you want to get as strong of a setup as possible early game, especially um, you know when you're playing against a one prize deck. But we are going to see that Galarian Zigzagoon come down for Cal, putting one damage counter on anything of Cal's choice here, opting to put on that Cramorant. And will, I mean, this is just a pure desperation play. Bring up the Orangaroo and rule yep. the region. Scoop up net, get that oh Zigzagoon no. out of there. And Tord right now is probably internally fist bumping. His opponent <laughs> had a pretty terrible start. There's no other way to put it. No supporter, no other Pokemon no in VIP play. Pass. No VIP pass. So that is just four cards that are clogged up in Cal's deck for the rest of the game. Cal does not have ways to lost zone cards like Tord does. So those cards are going to be hard to discard, hard to get rid of. Yeah, one training court, one path to the peak in deck. And, of course, that ruled the region. Taking out one of those stadiums, opting for the training 
court there from Cal. So now it is in the hand, doesn't come into play because that was the move that was used. And now we're back over to Tord. So really able to just take the uh, the offensive position, I guess, here on Tord's side. I'm sure very happy, as you said, she have fist bumping internally right now. But still, long way to go. Lost Zone is currently at three cards. So we are going to see some uh, playing around of Pokemon here, some more Lost Zone cards uh, toward, I think, dropped a card there, but we're all good. Okay, so here we go. Primate Wisdom starting off here, trading a card to the top and finding a Sableye off of that. This cross play from Cal is a little annoying because it forces Tord to expend a scoop-up net True. or some other form of switch card in order to get it out of the active spot when you really want to be utilizing that to get multiple comfies into play. But regardless, Tord is still able to go for the... Scoop up net, pick up the Guru, go for the flower selecting. We know that cross switcher is on top, so maybe Tord is okay losing a cross switcher. He does play, of course, the full four copies. Might be a type of situation where you play four copies and just kind of internally accept, yeah, I'm, I'm going to get this off once per game. So yeah, yeah. I need to play the full four because I lost zone a bunch of cards from my deck. But as long as I keep two cross switches around, I'll have that play available. Yeah, and I think toward I think asking how many <laughs> cards are in hand for Cal, but there is a Marnie in hand, but I don't know. When your opponent starts like that, yeah. you are really risking it if you choose to Marnie here. Do you decide to Marnie to give yourself the hand that you pot potentially need, which Tor definitely does, or do you just hope that uh, your opponent is yeah. sticking with a brick hand, yeah. but he's going to Marnie here. It, 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 it's such a tough call. Oh, I wow. hate playing cards like Marnie whenever you know your opponent just did nothing on their last turn, but already by Cal having that slow start, Tord is yeah. at an advantage. He's That's already true. far ahead, so... All Cal needs to get back into the game if Tord doesn't play the Marnie is like a top deck of an Irida or, yeah. you know, a top deck of some other piece to help him just reestablish a board and start getting into this game. So Tord doesn't want to risk it. Just play the Marnie, try to advance his board a little bit more, even though he's not going to play any other cards. It doesn't look like he's at least played a supporter this turn so he can maybe play something like the Colrus in his hand next turn now. Yeah, and he is going to switch out Retreat, I believe, into that Cramorant there can use the guru again because it was scoop up netted brought into the hand so that is effectively a brand new oranguru all right we're just going to see that spit innocently spitting on that palkia v there for the 110 damage and look at this this hand now for cal that marnie was definitely a huge payoff here we don't know what the uh well i guess we would have known what the top deck would have been but i don't know if it would have been anything cal would have needed so yeah this is huge having an irida now which allows cal to search out a water Pokemon and an item card and also had the Palkia V and the Radiant Greninja. So definitely a much better hand here for Cal. I'm sure feeling much better in this situation. But still, like you said, Chip, off to a slow start having such a terrible turn one initial setup. So kind of on the back foot still here. But, you know, we've seen so many of these origin form Palkia V star decks come up from positions that are very behind. And we've seen Cal Connor do this several times in tournaments as well. So yes. I believe. Yes, it is not over until it's over. There's plenty sure. of ways to fight back in these games. Cal just barely hanging on, though, not even able to find a Sapo. And he takes a useless VIP pass off oh the prizes. No. Yep, taking that prize card, so going down at least one prize card here. Now we're on towards side of the board here, starting out. Of course, Lost Zone is at four now for Tor. That is how the Cramorant was able to be used. And now we're going in with a Fog Crystal to search out a Psychic Energy. And I think we're going back into the deck as well for Tord. Yeah, there's another Fog Crystal he might be debating to play. He could hold off as well, though. Just go with the fl flower uh, selecting first and try to see what he can find. Really would love to get into a Colrus. I thought he had one in his hand, but it doesn't look like that's the case. Must have been that Clara hiding in there. So he would love to get into the Colrus so that he can start to add more cards to the Lost Zone. Like you mentioned, yeah. really wants to get to 10, only at 4. It, it's a bit of an ask, but it is possible to see 10 cards in the Lost Zone to close out this turn. We'll see what he can do. Yeah, definitely. I want as many in the Lost Zone as possible because the more cards you're getting into the Lost Zone, the more you're thinning your deck as well. So here's another flower selecting from Tord. It's going to be a fire energy and a comfy as the options here. Comfy is going to hit that Lost Zone. Goodbye, comfy. Totaling a five. See you later, comfy. 
Yeah, I think Tord is at minimum going to be attacking with Cramorant here. He does have one in hand, but this hand is definitely a bit awkward. Guru can maybe find him one other piece to work with, something else to mess around. Looks like it will just be the Psychic Energy going back in. He can now always fetch it back out because he's got another Fog Crystal. And Escape Rope yeah, was the grab. Rope. So that could get into another Comfy. That is very true. So many uh, switching cards in this deck. So many options. We are going to see another Fog Crystal, though, going back into the deck here for either a basic Psychic Pokemon or a basic Psychic Energy. Looks like it's probably going to be the Energy here from Tord coming out of the deck. So... What do you think, I mean, besides getting the Lost Zone cards, of course, up to as much as possible on Tord's side, Chip, what do you think the overall strategy is here for Tord in the next couple of turns? Pretty Ch much just attack every single with the turn. Cram? Yeah, at least put damage in play. Even though this Cramorant is unable to two-hit KO this Origin Form Palkia, yeah. it's still doing a lot. It's going to put it up to 220 damage, which means just a 60 damage hit from the Lost Mine would be able to get the KO on the Palkia to clean it up later on, and that actually maths out extremely well when you consider the 60 HP that Sobble has. Oh yeah, that is definitely true. Uh, having to bench Sobble so late in the game for Cal over there is definitely a huge liability on that side. So we are going to see that 110 spit innocently, and now we are over on Cal's side, of course, already down one prize card and continuing the turns here. So. Grabbing a Palkia V out of the prize cards, I believe, with that Hisuian Heavy Ball going to be shuffled back into the prize cards and laid out. Also, Cal getting a look at the prize cards just to know exactly what is in there is also very important, too. So Yeah, somehow Cal's hand is still just terrible, even after <laughs> the Marnie. I mean, it got him the Irida to at least pull off an attack, but... There is just really not much else. He'll get a prize this turn, knocking out the Cramorant. He can attach for turn to the Palkia. There is a water energy in hand, but it almost becomes a question of should you even attach the water energy? Because if you top deck the training court, then uh, that's a way that you could bump the path and use concealed cards. Though I guess Cal is probably anticipating this active Palkia going down, so there would be some energies in the discard pile to utilize. That is true. That is definitely true. And we are going to see another prize card taken, knocking out that Cramorant here on Cal's side. Back over to Tord, continuing with this Lost Box deck here. Lost Zone now at six cards. And just continuing these turns, like Chip said, consistently attacking is going to be so important. And then also aiming to get that Lost Zone to that 10 yes. cards to unlock that Sableye's move, also very important. And also really just building the hand size up. True. Towards deck has so many different combos, so many different possibilities. And the way you have access to these possibilities is by increasing your hand size as much as possible so you can just do so much on your turns. Yeah, because let's not forget about that Radiant Charizard as well. Of course. Towards deck, you know, that is a card that we see usually in the later halves of the game, especially when you're playing against a water deck, I suppose, even though damage isn't super uh, important here because towards Pokemon are kind of getting one shot anyway. But right. yeah, that Radiant Zard comes out last minute and can take a big knockout potentially on some Pokemon to kind of tie up the game, or not tie up the game, but wrap up the game um, as well for Tord. So lots of combos that could be potentially played out in the later turns. Tord doesn't have a knockout on board yet, or an attack lined up on the board yet. Does get into the scoop up net here, and he does have Clara that he could play for turn, grab back the couple of Cramorants from the discard pile, and at least keep on spitting innocently. Could even use the escape rope here to lay damage onto something that is not this active Palkia if he wants to try to set up a spread damage play with the Sableye. But I feel like it can't be wrong to just take this KO either and go ahead up and, and tie the game up two prizes apiece. Yep, but we are going to see that Clara be played by Tord. I believe the other one is in the prize cards, right at the top of the prize cards too. So there's only two in deck for Tord, and that is the first one that we're seeing. So those two Cramorants going straight back to the hand, as well as energy, I believe Tord took that back out uh, yes. off the Clara yes. too. So those, all those cards going back to the hand, Clara, such a strong card for this deck, that is for sure. So Cramorant is back online, back on the bench, and we are going to see a scoop up net now here for Tord on that active comfy, right into that Cramorant again. 
which would be taking the knock here on that origin yes. form Palkia V Star. Three hit KO works out for Kramer Ants. <laughs> yeah, true. Well, Tor does have a couple of cross switchers in hand as well, so there is a, a, a line where he could have made some plays that way, but we'll just take the two prizes, Clara, Air Balloon, and Colris Remain, and Cal top decks Echoing Horn. Can't uh -oh. even play it because Tord's bench is totally full. Has no energy, wow. no V-Star, no supporter. What is this hand? Cal even kind of getting a saving grace off that Marnie earlier in the game, but still, like you said, Chip, just is this rule the region again? It, it's rule the region Second again. Second rule the region for that the we've same seen. training court as well. For the same training court, absolutely bananas here is what we're seeing right now from Cal. So rule the region for the second time, searching out that training court, and then it's just going to be back over to Tord. Training court going into the hand, of course. Yeah, this is a, a huge turn for Tord, a big miss for Cal as well. Huge miss, for sure. So now Tord really going to pull ahead in this game, can at minimum swing for 110 with the Cramorant once again. He's got a plethora of switching cards as well, so we could see the flower selecting come through, switching cards into escape rope, into manually retreat, all kinds of things could happen here. Just continuing to try to advance the lost zone counter every single turn. Yeah, and that Cramorant's really, n it wasn't even knocked out. It's just running away with uh, being able to spit all over Kel's Pokemon here, which is quite sad to see indeed. Those innocent spits here from <laughs> the Cram. <laughs> so sad. <laughs> well, Tord doesn't really have much of an option. If he could have found his Marnie and put that training court to the bottom of the deck, that really would have eliminated most options for Cal. But True. Cal is going to get to hang on to this training court, which means we could see Radiant Greninja next turn use concealed cards and try to, try to bail Cal out <laughs> potentially. Yep, we are going to see another spit innocently there. Cal's going to top deck a water energy. So like you said, Chip, that training court's going to come into play here. Bump that path to the peak on Cal's end, and we are going to see that concealed cards. This is huge for Cal. Capacious Bucket and an Evolution Incense. I mean, the Evolution at least Incense, that's something. yeah, can grab the V-Star, can keep on attacking, keep on taking prizes. We haven't even seen a single Sobble out of this deck, Chip. Nope. You wouldn't know that Cal plays them, but indeed, <laughs> indeed he does. There are four <laughs> copies of Sobble in his deck. We, uh, they're just not showing up to the party just yet. Yeah, Sobbles are gone. Fashionably late Sobbles here today. But we are going to see that Evolution Incense to search out that origin form Palkia V-Star, and now finally for Cal, that, that concealed cards bailing Cal out, just showing the power of that card, getting you out of some sticky situations sometimes, but still, Cal is working from a very behind position, yes. already 110 damage on that origin form Palkia V-Star in the active. Training court getting utilized, bringing this energy back. I think Cal also has the Capacious Bucket in hand, doesn't want to... Pull cards out of the deck, maybe? Or he's thinking about it, at least. Yeah, I like that. Putting the coin on the training court, even. Yeah. I dig it. All right. Here we go. Oh, so getting a... Uh, taking that knockout on the Cramorant, retrieving a uh, prize card there off of the Cram. Now, Cal is ahead on the prize cards, but I really have to favor toward with this board position. Cal just has not been able to establish much. I will say the benefit here, though, is that Cal has not put low HP Pokemon in play, right? That's There's no true, yeah. no easy targets for Sableye to pick off, though uh, it d has meant that this game has been pretty scuffed so far from Cal. We'll see what he can do to navigate and get back in it. Yeah, I mean, when your entire engine is just not even showing up whatsoever, it could be very difficult. I mean, we mentioned this before, Chip, the entire bases of this deck are those shady dealings abilities, the Drizzile, the Inteleon, and to not have that uh, be accessible is pretty difficult there. All right, so toward having to make the usual decisions here, we are going to see a switch cart into a another Comfy, out of the active Comfy, and into another flower selecting. Looking at these two cards, of course, Battle VIP being a very easy, easy choice. Easy choice there for Tord. Of course, over a Colrus's experiment, too. Like <laughs> yes, so yes. easy. <laughs> so Definitely don't want to be getting rid of that Colrus, <laughs> and I think, in fact, we. 
Uh, I think Tord would like to play the chorus, most likely, yeah, this time. Yeah, I'm going to guess. <laughs> and that is what we are going to see. So chorus's experiment. Top five cards here. Three are going to go to your hand, and two to the lot zone. So some more choices here on Tord's end. But I'm sure feeling pretty comfortable so far with these because Cal has just been not having a, big, a good time so far. A ton of supporters for Tord here. A col two chorus. Oh, and wow. a Marnie does have to lost zone of Colrus, it seems. And a Fog Crystal goes down as well. Wants to hang on to the lost vacuum as a way to potentially bump Path. We saw him do this in his top eight match, holding on to that piece. You know, wanted Path and play through the, out the duration of the game, but made sure to keep the vacuum around so that when the time came, he could get rid of it, turn on that excited heart ability of the Radiant Charizard, and go in for a big knockout. Yeah, blocking your opponent, but leaving yourself out. It's very important indeed. So here we go. And speaking of Path to the Peak, Tord is going to bump that training court for a Path to the Peak of his own. And I believe Cal, yeah, Cal playing one training court and one to Path to the Peak. So we yep. are going to say see a Path to the Be Peak in play for the rest of the game pretty much from here on out. And Cal hold, held off on benching the Origin Form Palkia V in his hand. If he had put that down and used Star Portal, he could have at least gotten a couple of extra energy cards into play. Now he's not even going to be able to use his V-Star power at all this entire game. Oh no, <laughs> this is just very unfortunate to watch. Of course, not for Tord though, that is for sure, so. Yes, fans of Tord Reklev rejoice. He <laughs> yeah, is right? swinging again with Cramorant. Cal Connor fans in shambles right now though, <laughs> yes. unfortunately, but. Hey, that's somehow uh, sometimes how the cookie crumbles, but we are going to see that origin form Palkia V hit the bench at this point in time. Capacious Bucket being activated for Cal Connor here, searching out two basic water energies as well from the deck. Well, how does Cal even attempt to recover from here, Chip? Well, what Cal, wh what this has done, the way that this game has gone so slow, like I mentioned earlier, there's no low HP Pokemon in play for Tord to target down, forcing him to just put 110 to 120 damage onto Palkia Vs over the course of multiple turns does make this a little bit questionable. I mean, we see Cal is going to go down to two prizes here. Tord Reklev is still sitting at four, but all he needs to do is take two knockouts. If he can knock out this active origin form Palkia V-Star and set up for the Radiant Charizard to knock out the final incoming origin form Palkia, he's going to be in a really solid spot. Yeah, absolutely. Evolution Incense searching out that origin form Palkia V-Star. I also will note Tord Reklev's Lost Zone is at 11 cards now, so I don't think we said it before, but that Sableye yes. is unlocked now, that Lost Mine move. The mine is open. Dig away, Sableye. Go ahead and spread those damage counters. Yeah, search for the gems. Cal will play the Heavy Ball, just wants to fail it, thin that out, doesn't want to draw into it. We do know Tord plays a few Disruption cards in the couple of copies of Marnie. Yep, that is true. Okay, so... Cal has the... Yeah, we'll just go for the knockout okay, here, yeah. subspace well. <laughs> there is the knockout there. The prize card has been drawn now for Calvin Connor, going down to only two prize cards left. Back over to Tord, but like you said, Chip, Tord just has to take a couple more knockouts here, and look how much damage is on the board as well. Sableye now being unlocked for Tord too, so we shall see what happens. Going through the discard pile before choosing what to promote here on Tord's side, just making sure that he has all the outs, all the pieces needed for a potential play here. We do have both cross switchers in hand as well for Tord, yes. but starting off with promoting that comb fee. And top decking Marnie as well. Could be pretty nice because Cal actually did just play Evolution Incense and put an Origin Form Palkia V-Star in the hand. Tord True. knows that that piece is around. He also knows that Cal just put two energy cards in hand with the Capacious Bucket. So this could be a decent time to go for a Marnie plus spread the damage with Sableye. If you can... Uh, lost Mine, 60 damage to the active and 60 damage to the bench. That would take you two prizes on the active Pokemon and set up the benched Palkia to be KO'd by Radiant Charizard, even if it became a V-Star. Oh, yeah, this is such a close game here, even after a difficult start from Cal Connor on the right side there. But here we go, Tord's still working through this turn. We saw the first flower selecting pop off there, of course, the Battle VIP pass, hitting the Lost Zone, bringing it to a total of 12 uh, cards. And then I believe it was another Colris kept, or may have been a different card, but we are now seeing an escape rope here, Radiant 
Greninja being mm, the Jonathan choice. Jonathan twice but, yeah, about it. Yeah, thinking twice and actually going for the origin form Palkia V with that escape rope now toward getting the option, of course, to promote whatever he wants to the active position going for that Sableye. That Lost Mine is unlocked. 12 damage counters able to be placed on Cal's board. Tord does bring the Lost Vacuum to the front. He's going to count how many cards are in deck. Looks like it was about six or seven. I wonder if we'll see that Lost Vacuum bump this stadium or put it on top of the deck, mm. then go for the Marnie, and then he'll have yes. access to that card still. Yes, yeah, very true. We could see some, uh, like you said, Chip, some potential Radiant Zard plays. You never know. So here we go. <laughs> Oh, yeah, Radiant Zard coming down to the board here with that fire energy already yeah. attached. And he's prepped the Lost Vacuum yep, on top on of the deck top. For, for this exact reason. He Bumped wants to that peak. bench the Zard, put the energy on it, make it a known threat, and play the Marnie. And he even could attack with the Radiant Zard this turn on the other end of the Marnie True. if he wanted to, and then leave that Origin Form Palkia V-Star on the bench as an easy target for Sableye to close the game out. Yeah, that actually is a good point, Chip. So we did see a lot happen there from Tord playing just flawlessly here. And Cal having to only draw into four cards. Of course, that V-Star out of the hands now as well for Calvin Connor. I think drew back into that Drapion that has just been chilling in the deck as well. So I didn't see the other cards, but definitely a disruptive move here from Tord. And we are just going to see that Lost Mine Taking the knockout here on that benched origin form Palkia V-Star. This is a line where Cal actually does have a win condition. If Cal can use boss's orders and bring up the Radiant Charizard, Ooh. Tord does not have Clara. Clara is left in the prizes. If Cal True. could knock out the Charizard with the boss's orders, he could maybe find a way to win. It doesn't look like he has it, though. Roxanne yeah. might be his only chance as well. That's true. Roxanne, Roxanne plus Hope Tord can't get into anything. Roxanne is in the hands. Benching a Sobble here as well on Cal's side. Put one in play just in case you get another turn. That's fine. Yep, I think he will hold off on putting a second one down as that would be two <laughs> easy targets for the yeah. 120 damage of Lost Mine. Yeah, most definitely. That is for sure. All right, and we are going to see this Roxanne here from Cal's side. So both players are going to shuffle their hands into their decks. Cal going to draw six cards and toward only getting two. Of course, Roxanne's only able to play if your opponent is three prize cards or less left. Of course, toward being at two. So... Two prize cards left and going to draw into two. And that means that the setup that Tord had with that lost vacuum is now gone at this point. Yep, it is back into the deck. Tord does play three copies of the lost vacuum, so he's got a decent shot to draw into it. And let's not forget off these six cards, Cal, while still having a very thick deck, has not had a chance to thin hardly at all. True. He needs to draw into a Palkia V-Star and an energy. Evolution instance, or we're going to... Oh, wow. That is pretty much that nothing. That is neither, and Cal's going to scoop yeah. it there. That hand, I mean, like you said, Chip, not being able to thin the deck at all, not able to get the pieces needed in that entire game. Cal just coming up so short in every single turn, working from the back foot, and Tord is going to take us to the 1-0, taking that first game down. And you can see, even with Cal not setting up as well as he would have liked, that was a really, really close <laughs> yeah, game. And Cal had a very real way to win there at the end. He was not out of it, came down to the wire, but the cards from Roxanne just didn't quite fall his way. I do think Tord was still in a fine position and had plenty of outs, of course, to close out the game. I think he did actually draw into the Lost Vacuum off yeah. the Roxanne anyway. So even if Cal had found all the pieces necessary, I think Tord would have still been able to close that out. So we will be heading here into a game two. Ooh, so exciting, Chip. That was a great first game to see from both of our players. I'm excited to get into a game two as well. We'll see if the initial setups change a little bit here for our players. Do you think Cal is going to to go first this time too, Chip. I feel like that's... Yeah, uh, you got to think that's kinda... that you want to go first with Palkia pretty yeah. much always. Going second like is fine, especially when you can use Keep Calling. What I'm interested to see is, you know, Cal kind of not by choice played a game without put, putting any sobbles, sobbles down, yeah. right? 
but it almost worked out for him. I wonder if he ever kind of leans into that strategy a little bit, if he can more accurately play supporters throughout the game, uh, which he wasn't able to do for most of that first one. That's, um, that's true. I like, wonder if there's a path for him to, to, to win the game without using them, though he does have the uh, text for this matchup with the canceling cologne, so mm -hmm. setting up those plays usually does involve using multiple Drizziles. It, it's, it's a toss-up. I, I think he'll probably lean into still using Shady Dealing, still trying to get Sobbles out early, because if you can evolve them up into Drizziles, you can get them out of play before Lost Mine really becomes a threat, right? Yeah, definitely. And I think definitely something that could be unintentionally noted, I suppose. But we'll see how it plays out here for Cal. Looking at these prize cards here, uh, nothing too wild. Of course, Manaphy not stopping um, the Lost Mine no. damage counters because it only blocks damage, not those damage counters. So not too difficult to hear. Also, Galarian Zigzagoon, not a big deal. Cal is going first here. I did get word of that. So we are going to see, of course. Uh, wait, was there just a pass? Did Cal draw and pass, or has yeah, he no, chosen no, Cal, to go second? No, no, no. Cal went first. I, I uh, got word of it. Wow. So that is just a that is just wow. a draw pass here. Cal, from Cal has nothing here. Look at this hand. Look at the hands. He's got an Irida. He can play next turn. He's got a Drizzile. It looks like, but Cal tossing the hand down on the table. He can't Shaking believe the it. Shaking head too. I can't believe it, Chip. I cannot believe that hand. Looking this game at him. What is the could luck? be over this turn, Shelby. Oh no. Tord Reklev has started Cramorant. Cramorant can attack for free if you get four cards into the lost zone. All Tord Reklev needs is to do huge. is on this turn, use Comfy two times and use Colrus, or maybe work in a lost vacuum play somewhere. There are so many ways for Tord to find the game winning play this turn. The Lone Sobble, oh my gosh, at this point. This, wow. wow. Cal probably wishing opted to go second at this point. I mean, yeah, Check. it's pretty good when you start Sobble Irida, but there's no, no way he could have yeah. known that his opening hand would have been no. this bad. Absolutely not. That is, uh, But yeah, this is definitely always a potential there. You know, the pe percentages are low, but not zero. That is for sure. So let's see if Torg can pull this off to get a donk on the little wow. lone Sobble. That would be incredible to see if this Lost Zone box can really showcase uh, it's power with getting those cards in and taking this knockout and just taking a 2-0. Yes. Tord does have a lot of switch cards already in the hand. We see escape rope. We see the yep. air balloon. This active comfy can, once it comes active here from the escape rope, can move to the bench pretty freely into another comfy potentially. Here we go. Flower selecting two cards here. Are they both comfies? They They're are both, both comfies. comfies. I mean, that's kind of what you want to see in a way because you want more comfies. So let's get that comfy down one card now in the lost zone. We need to see four here and a switch back into that Cramorant to see this game for Tord. He's got oh, a Rangaroo in w as well in hand. So that's yeah, one more that's dig option that he could have access to. What he really needs to find, I mean, if he finds a Colrus's experiment off of this Comfy, oh, yeah. that's almost for sure going to be the game because he needs to get the Colrus and then just find a switching card. He can retreat into this Comfy, use the Flower Selecting. That's plus one. If he finds Colrus off the Flower Selecting, that would almost certainly close the game out. Yeah, most definitely. And going in with that Fog Crystal to search out, of course, an Energy or a basic Psychic Pokemon going for that Comfy. So three Comfies down now, Chip. We just need to see a little bit more. It's really going to come down to what do we see off these flower selecting abilities. Of course, Air Balloon already down on that active Comfy for Tord. So having a retreat option already is pretty big here. The rest of his turn really depends on this first Comfy because he I don't True. think he has any other switching cards. He's got the Guru as one extra dig option. But if he whiffs any movement card, like a switch, if he whiffs a Colrus here, he does find oh, the scoop up the next. scoop up next. Okay. okay. That is an out here for Tord, but it is coming down to a, a really suspenseful moment here. Yep. Now we have two cards in this loss zone. Can we get to this four? Scoop up net can pick up this active, reset it, send up this other comfy. And then if he finds another switching card, that could get him into the next company. This oh is the gosh. third card in the Lost Zone. Third card. Let's see. Double oh, path. Double path to the peak. And I think that is kind of bricked out here I for Tord. So. He can use a Rengaru. So that is his one oh my gosh. last option. If he can Guru <laughs> into a piece that lets him keep drawing another switching card or oh. a Chorus' experiment, he could wrap it up. Let's see what he finds here. Primate Wisdom, what do you have? 
He's oh. hiding it over there on the side. It's a chorus. It's a chorus. It's, it's a chorus. All Tor Reklev needs off of this chorus is a switching card. Any switching card will do, and oh he will win gosh. the game this turn. Five cards to do it. Does he find it? Escape rope. Switching card. There's yes, the switching card. There we go. And Tor Reklev will win the Peoria Regional Championships. Oh my goodness. Our regional champion here at our.